The last thing that we would like to cover in the lecture video is how to paint over an image. So we don't expect you to be master artists taking the Art 12 80 Photoshop class and there are times when you're going to want to paint from scratch, but this is a method that uses the mixer brush tool to be able to take an existing image and apply brush strokes over the top of it. We're going to follow a few basic steps and you should either print this slide or you should write it down because it will help you. And if something is not working, come back to the steps and redo them to make sure that you've hit every single step. So the steps that we're going to follow are to open an image that you wish to paint and then to use some form of non-destructive editing to preserve the original. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save a copy of whatever the image is and I'm going to make it a .psd working file or Photoshop file. I would recommend resetting your workspace to painting so that the panels that are hanging out on the outside of your screen or on the edges will be your brushes and your brush presets and things like that. You should duplicate the original background layer and then replace the original background layer with white or you can use some sort of pattern or texture if you want your painting to have that look or feel. Next, create several blank layers and rename them according to what will be painted on them and so if you're doing some sort of landscape you could label them trees, lake, house, dog, um, I've got an archway in mind, so maybe I'll, I'll label it archway or road or something like that. You need to select the mixer brush tool, which, which should be somewhere near the paint, um, not paintbrush, the brush tool. And then you need to make brush texture decisions via the brush and brush presets panel. From the options bar, you need to make sure that you check sample all colors. And then you can begin painting on your new layers. Um, you can use painterly brush strokes like cross hatching or C-shaped textures um, to create textures in your image. Remember that different parts of your image will require different textures and so the sky you might want to make light and fluffy so it looks like uh, painted clouds but if something has a lot of detail you might want to change it to a more hard edge brush. Um, tips for painting on an image are to change the foreground color to create different effects. Consider Lowering the opacity on your painted layers to allow some of the original background to show through. If you're going to do that for your project in our class, it's perfectly okay. But if I turn off your background layer, I should see a fully painted image. I shouldn't see three or four brush strokes that um, then are have the opacity light lowered so you see through it. You should experiment with layer blending modes to create unique painted effects. And the wetter the brush is, the more it is going to mix. And so it's usually easier if you choose a wetter brush. I have opened a couple images that I found on the stock images that we have for this class and so I'm going to give it a try on both of these. I'm not going to demo the entire process of painting because we're going to have demo videos for each chapter in the course and so there will be a demo video that goes into more detail about how to paint the entire image. So the first thing you need to do is practice non-destructive editing so I'll save a copy of my little archway image here. I'm just going to toss mine on the desktop and I'll save it as a Photoshop file. Once you're done, I need to reset my workspace so that I'm using the painting workspace and I've been using it so I've closed some of the panels and so even though I have painting set, I'm going to choose to reset the painting. On the layers panel, I'm going to duplicate the layer, uh, the background layer, and then the actual background needs to be white for this to work so I'm going to select all and then hit the delete key and choose to fill it with white. You could, if you wanted to apply a pattern to this, you could, if you're interested in that, you can look up in the book how to add the, the texture to your background layer. Before I get started with the mixer brush, I am going to add a few layers. It's important to separate the elements of your design so that you can have a layer just for the sky. In my case, I don't really have any color in the sky, so I might not want to have a sky layer. You could have trees layer, the castle layer, and the road layer. And we'll call this castle road and trees. Um, figure out how many layers that you think you'll need for this and then as you're painting the road make sure that you're painting it on the road layer. How am I doing Whitney? You're doing awesome. Yeah okay so we'll, we'll move on to the next part here. You need to select the mixer brush for this to work and so so far we've been using the paintbrush tool and so if you grab the paintbrush tool you can start painting but that's not going to give you the result you're looking for. You can see those funky leaves that we were using in the last video. You need to switch to the mixer brush tool and so when you look at the um, tools panel you'll need to find the one that looks like a paintbrush with a little drop um, of paint above it. It's the mixer brush tool. When you start painting you need to make sure that you're still choosing the size and the texture and the settings for the brush that you want to paint with. And so if I'm going to paint let's say the trees first, I'm on this trees layer up here, I kind of want to have a sporadic um, 
maybe a dry texture to the brush that's going to create the texture of those um, the leaves that are up there. And so you can use the brush presets panel or you could use the brushes panel to make decisions about the brush that you have. And so right now I have a fan brush selected. If I reselect that mixer brush tool and we come up to the, the options bar at the top of your screen, you can see that I just chose the default um, fan brush. And then now if I was to paint, it would kind of grab the colors that are in the picture and it would paint the design for me. I'm going to undo that. Before you get started with the painting, you need to make sure that your paintbrush isn't loaded with any ink. And so on your options bar, you can choose to clean the brush. And then you can start painting from scratch and the colors will come directly from the image that you have selected. We'll sample all layers to make that happen. Um, notice the colors that came out before they were a little darker. I was practicing on a different image and so it's still pulling the colors from that image. But now that I've chosen the sample all layers option on the options bar, when I start to paint, even though I'm on the trees layer, when I start to paint the trees, I can come through. I'm going to go really close so you can see the texture. As I start painting, it's pulling the colors from the image that's there. And so if you come through, you can paint the trees in. I'm using little short strokes to add texture to the design. And you can, if this brush isn't working for what you want to do, you can always go back and change the brush to something else. And I'm just making little half moon or C shape items. I'm coming from the outside in. You can also brush from the inside out. And so if you want it to look like it blends off the side of the page. Um, the reason that I'm doing this on different layers is so that after I'm done this layer, I might mess up like I'm going to brush into the castle, definitely brushing into the castle and I'm destroying that castle layer right now. But if I go back and I paint on a different layer and I paint the castle back in, it can sit in front of that layer. And then you won't even notice that, that I painted over the castle. And so we'll just kind of quickly brush the, the trees in over here. You want to go slower and pay more attention to what's happening. I just want to fill it in really fast. Before I move on to the next layer, I just want to show you that if I turn the background layer off, I did not paint the entire image. I could come back and I could fill in those gaps if I want to. But if you leave the original layer turned on, you'll never really know that you missed the original. So the next road is the road layer, and it has a different texture than the trees. And so maybe I want to go back and change my brush. So we can choose the brush panel or this drop down up here. And maybe for the road, I want it to have, I don't know, a more gritty texture like this brush here. And so now when I go to paint on the road, I can sample. I'm still sampling all layers. But now I can change the way it looks and I can paint the road in all the way across. I'm going to do the same thing that I did for, you might want to change the brush and make it smaller as you go back for perspective reasons. And so we can use our key command here. I can use my left bracket key to make the brush smaller. And as we go further back, we can use smaller brush strokes. so They look like they're more in the distance. I'll do it again, make the brush smaller. We'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And you can go through and you can paint the whole road. I'm not even going to worry about if I ruin the castle because, again, it's below it on the layers panel. And go across this way for that part of the path. Maybe come through. I don't even care about that castle part. You can always come back and you can repaint over these areas. And then, last but not least, when it's time to paint the castle, we'll pretend that I painted the rest of the image. Now you can come back with the castle and you could use a really small brush and you could zoom into those areas that you have painted before. So I'm going to turn those layers off. With the castle layer selected, if we zoom in, well, let's change our brush first. We can choose another brush that has maybe a different texture to it. And when we zoom in on our image, let's click out of there. You can make the brush really small, and the smaller the brush is, the more fine detail you can get with your textures. And so it's important that I have a crisp edge on the inside of this arch now because it's the top layer, it's the one you're going to see. And so maybe you just come across and you, you paint the edge of that in first. And then you can come through 
and then maybe with really small brush strokes and a wet brush maybe and whoops I messed that part up right there you can always paint over it and you can come through and you can paint and so one of the specific areas that I painted over was down the bottom left hand corner near the road and so when I paint that I can just make sure I get a nice sharp edge to it maybe I put the stone on its own layer so that the stone remains clear and as you're painting you can paint in the texture of the wall and so now if I turn those layers back on um, on the road layer, I went way over the road and into the castle, but because the castle layer is above the road layer, when I paint that layer back in, you'll never know that I had originally painted over. Okay, that's just a brief introduction to the painting of an image using the mixer brush. You should give it a try and make sure you can get it to work. If you're having trouble getting it to work, contact me or Whitney or whoever your teacher is for assistance. Um, you can also watch the demo videos which are included in the chapter. Um, go to the discussion thread for each chapter to find those demo videos. Do you have anything else to add, Whitney? No, that was awesome. Thanks, Jessica. Okay, then we're going to end this lecture and uh, you can start on your projects for Module 4.